good morning, everyone. Um, before I begin, I just want to thank you first for being here and for giving me the opportunity to come here today to talk to you about FSHD. I also want to thank the FSH Society for giving me the opportunity to represent the FSHD community. FSHD is a disability that affects me, my family, and hundreds of thousands of people worldwide. I have had the opportunity to connect with many people affected by this disability, and over the course of the next 10 to 15 minutes, I will tell not only my story, but theirs as well. The FSHD community is one of the most welcoming and supportive communities I've ever been a part of. It would have been difficult to cope with FSHD without them. <coughs> my biggest support comes from my family too, as my mom, uncle, and grandfather also have FSHD. I also have an older sister who does not show any signs of FSHD. Growing up, I wanted to be just like her. She was a D1 athlete in college and excelled at almost every sport she tried. Sports were big in my family, and I started off doing gymnastics. I was actually pretty good at it until my FSHD started to come into play. All the other girls were moving up levels while I was stuck in the same spot. I ended up quitting because it just started to become too difficult for me. I then moved on to field hockey, lacrosse, and track throughout middle school. It was a great time in my life because I felt strong and athletic. But I noticed that even that was becoming more difficult. Many of my teammates would tell me that I looked funny when I ran, and by freshman year of high school, I had to stop playing those sports because I lost the ability to run. I then got into sailing because I figured that my FSHD shouldn't compromise my ability to do something that was not as physically demanding. I did well in sailing, won races, sailed on varsity, until my senior year when the back pain became too much to handle because of my curved spine. So I ended up having to quit sailing too. It felt like I could never really excel at anything. I've had to give up whole things my whole life. And that made me feel like a lot of things just weren't worth trying. Until now, even though I can't play those sports anymore, I'm not giving up on the idea that there is a cure out there for this debilitating disease. Before I go further, you need to know that my experience with FSHD is different than others who live with this disability. This is going to be my story. Some might have similar experiences, but everyone progresses differently. And that's what represents some of the greatest challenges that we face. I've met several people around the eight same age as me. Some are in wheelchairs and some are still going for runs. Everyone's situation varies so much that my story couldn't possibly cover the things that everyone else goes through. It's scary because you really can't determine how quickly FSHD is going to take over your body. Even within my family, the progression is varied. If, you, if I look at my grandfather, he didn't start showing symptoms until his 30s. For my mom and uncle, it was the teenage years. And for me, it was sixth grade. It can start at any time, but one can never tell when or how it's going to affect you. There really isn't a set standard for the progression of FSHD. I know there are many people here who do know how FSHD can affect someone, but for those who don't, here's a little bit about it. It's a muscle wasting disease where your arms, shoulder, and face are usually the first and most severely affected. But that's really not true for everyone. Almost every muscle in your body starts to deteriorate, and for me, for example, my abdominal, my abdominal muscles are much weaker than my face. The majority of people with FSHD cannot run, and a lot cannot walk. Also, there is tremendous pain associated with FSHD that can affect your arms, neck, back, and other muscles. I could go on and on about the symptoms, but as I continue, you'll be, be able to pick up on others. FSHD is an everyday adjustment. There's a lot of misinformation about FSHD. Although most people would call it a slow progressing disease, there was really no getting used to it. I wake up every morning and I'm in pain as soon as I get out of bed until I get back into bed at night. Everything I do throughout the day is affected by my FSHD. Whether that's bending over the sink to brush my teeth, 
trying to get food out of the upper cabinets, getting out of a small car, and walking on ice during the winter. There's no getting used to chronic pain and daily muscle deterioration. And honestly, I wouldn't call it a slow progressing disease. Uh, just over a year and a half ago, my boyfriend and I moved into an apartment that was on the second floor of our building, and there's no elevator. And in the beginning, I could easily walk up the stairs to the second floor. It really wasn't a big deal for me. But now, walking up those stairs and every other set of stairs, for that matter, is my biggest challenge of the day. It's painful, it's difficult, and it makes me upset because I know it's hard for me each and every time I do it. And that kind of deterioration scares me. I'm scared of what's to come in my future. Will I be able to play with my kids? Will I even be able to have kids? I, won't, I know I won't be able to pick them up or play around with them and run around with them. And will my mom be able to see my kids? In the last few years that my grandfather was alive, my mom barely got to see him. He lived in another state and did not want to leave his house because it was too difficult. His FSHD kept him sitting all day. He had sleep apnea and he couldn't even lift a glass to drink out of it. But most importantly, he wasn't able to drive and visit his daughter. It's scary to think that FSHD can keep families physically apart. Even, even today, my, my mom wanted to be here, but she can't. Because it's just too much for her to travel alone. It's not just a physical decline, it's an emotional decline too. It's common for people with FSHD to become depressed, drained, scared. Something that has been bothering me in the past few years is the things that people have said to me. I've had countless people ask me when I'm due or are you having a boy or a girl? They assume that I'm pregnant because of the way that I walk. And that's been hard for me mentally. How can I feel good about myself when people are constantly bringing me down even if they don't know that they're doing it? And I'm not the only one. Most people with FSHD I've met are not happy with how they look. Uh, one guy recently said to the Facebook group that I'm a part of, Sometimes I look at the muscular chest of other men and I'm like, will I ever be able to transform my body into that? It's just upsetting, you know, to have something so out of reach. To me, that's so sad. Obviously, physical appearance isn't the most important thing, but it does dramatically affect your confidence and your mental health. I've come across many people in this community who will not even post a picture of themselves because they're not happy with the way they look. Many people with FSHD cannot smile because of the lack of muscle in their face. Imagine that, not being able to smile, ever. Something the majority of people in this world take for granted and overlook. And if you look behind me at this slide, these are just some of the messages I've gotten um, from people who are scared and wanna reach out or their posts in the Facebook group of people who are just unhappy and they're worried about the future. We have one life on this earth, and I think everyone deserves to be happy with themselves. Mm -hmm. We all deserve to hug someone, to take a walk on the beach, to go for a run. And my hope is that someday soon, the FSHD community will do just that, and it will be a life-changing time for all of us. I know that a cure is out there, and every year the researchers are making huge strides in finding it. Uh, one of the most amazing things I came across recently was another post in the FSHD Facebook group. Someone asked, when there is a cure, what is the first thing you are going to do that you can't do now? And these are actually some of the responses from that post. Um, I know that FSHD affects, I know how FSHD affects me and others, but to see some of these answers that people posted actually made me cry. The first response was smile for the world to see. Run and play with my kids was another. Give someone a hug, walk the dog, dance, go for a run. It went on and on. And what I found so amazing about these responses were that they were just everyday things that most people wouldn't even think about having to give up. Even before I was diagnosed with FSHD, these weren't things that I imagined I would ever not be able to do. I mean, think about it. Have you ever smiled and thought, wow, what if I could never do this again? It took me a while to realize how lucky I was that, I could, that this was something I could still do. Even if it may seem so minimal to you or so trivial, but they're everything to someone with FSHD. 
and that's why we need your help. We have a great many companies taking on the challenge to find treatments or a cure for this disease. It's imperative that we accelerate treatments to give the FSHD community hope. Without hope, we cannot determine what our future looks like. Hundreds of thousands of people around the world are affected by FSHD, with many being diagnosed daily. Some are hopeful for a cure, but some believe that there will never be one. You being here today, the drug companies, the researchers, the government agencies, the friends, give us hope. I want to thank you for that. You have a whole community behind you that truly thanks you for investing your time and energy into this cause and for the great work you do. I encourage you to continue, don't ever give up, and by doing so, you will change thousands of people's lives, including mine. Thank you.